newscast for the week of October 25th, 2010. I'm Josh Barber. Our top story of the week is the invasion of the flu shots on campus. Christy Taylor and Desiree Smith have the story. Many people have uncertainties about getting flu shots, so Christy and I decided to visit the Student Involvement Center where flu shots are being given on campus. It is not a live vaccine. It is an inactivated virus. It is impossible for the flu shot to actually make you sick. You might have a little stiffness in your arm, but if you get sick after having had the vaccine, you are getting sick before. Um, the nasal sprays are a live virus. Um, when they give you the nasal spray, you actually can get the flu from the flu or from the flu mist. Um, with the flu shots themselves, they're an inactivated dead virus that they just um, inject in your body to help your body build up immunity to that virus. Even though it's not possible to get sick from a dead flu virus vaccine, some students express other concerns about getting the shot. I'm afraid of needles, but also I feel like um, you know people use too much medicine and it probably creates like larger viruses. You know. So you think that by getting the shot, it spreads the virus? Um, no, not necessarily that it spreads it, but um, you create viruses that eventually become immune to the vaccine and then they're more. According to www.flu.gov, children under the age of two years, people age 65 and older, or people of any age that have chronic medical conditions are more likely to have complications from the flu. However, college students are also likely to experience the flu bug. Um, yes, they are more likely to get it because, you know, you have so many people in such a small environment in classrooms together, using door handles, in and out of facilities, using same desks and that type of thing, um, and not everybody's the best about washing their hands. For those of you that don't want a flu shot but are still interested in staying safe, around campus there are various hand sanitizer dispensers available for use. This has been Desiree Smith and Christy Taylor with Horizon Newscast. Thanks ladies. Halloween is just around the corner. Along with all the costumes and candy comes the infamous haunted houses and spooky stories. Stephanie Taggart and David Woodson have this week's feature story on this haunted holiday. Orbs. Shadows. Distant voices. Unexplained phenomena. Paranormal activity. Are we alone? IUS students respond. Paranormal activity, it definitely exists because, I mean, I know from experience that my house will have remotes go missing and we'll search up and down for them, we'll tear the couch apart, we'll look in the couch because our couch likes to eat things, you know, we'll see if the dogs have them and then we'll turn around and it'll be sitting on the coffee table. I mean, you, you can't ignore that. Um, about four years ago, I was with some friends at Waverly Hills Sanatorium in Louisville, Kentucky. I went up to the, I believe it was the second or third floor. Uh, I didn't see anything. I went to the body shoot, didn't see anything. Then I went to room 502, where the nurses hung, hung, hung themselves, killed themselves. I'm never going back in that room again. One local morning radio show takes 102 listeners with them to tour Waverly Hills every year around Halloween. We spoke to Linda Lambert, George Lindsay, and Aaron Miller of the Lambert and Lindsay show about their experiences at Waverly Hills. This will be our 10th year, believe it or not, doing the morning show out there. Yeah. And it came about because there was a special on television about Waverly Hills, and it was on a list of the most haunted places in America. And uh, we just, I mean, on a lark, we just called the guy who had just bought it, Charlie Mattingly, and I said, look, is there any way we could invite some listeners to come out and be with us and let us do the show? We went out there on the Friday before Halloween, and we just said, hey, whoever wants to come out and join us, see Waverly Hills, come and join us. We had 700 people show up wow. before 7 o'clock. <laughs> so Charlie said, hey, good idea, but we got to kind of cut down on the number of people. So now we do a contest, and we can only take 102 listeners. Right. So. so, What kind of stuff have you seen at Waverly? That We've seen all, all kinds of things. Um, shadows and doors opening and closing and weird noises things that you can't explain on video is are the things that that stick out in my mind the most oh. george yeah. was slammed to the ground i got knocked down yeah during our right. second or third year yeah. out there he was standing by our truck in the dark five o'clock in the morning mm -hmm. holding thousands of dollars worth of equipment and all of a sudden he felt shoved from behind and ended up on the ground oh 
cradling the equipment, thankfully. Oh, yeah. And that year we had a psychic with us who mm -hmm. said that the reason George was shoved to the ground is it had, was he was shoved by a former groundskeeper mm -hmm. who didn't like all the still <laughs> on the property and did not like all the noise. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, it was pretty creepy. I mean, it, it was one of those things that just kind of makes the hair stand. Well, yeah. if I had hair, it would make it stand <laughs> up on the back of my neck. Yeah. <laughs> This is David Woodson and Stephanie Taggart for the Horizon Newscast. Those are your top stories of the week. Here's Kevin Schmidt with this week's top news briefs. With Halloween just days away, New Albany's haunted Culbertson Mansion is gearing up for some special events for the eventful weekend. This Friday and Saturday night, the mansion will be hosting their annual, literally, a haunted house event. The haunted house costs $13 and is sure to be a thrill to get you in the Halloween mode. Scary storytelling at the mansion will also occur various nights this week at the mansion for those of you who aren't actually ready for the haunted tour. For more information on times and ticket prices, contact the Culbertson Mansion at 812-944-9600. On most college campuses in the United States, more than 75% of students admit to some sort of cheating. This is according to Daniel L. McCabe of Rutgers University, who's the founder of the Center for Academic Integrity. As bad as it sounds, much of this academic dishonesty is a result of misunderstandings about plagiarism. Maria Accardi, coordinator of library instruction here on campus, and Leanne Meyer, who's the director of the Writing Center, are teaming up to present workshops where students can learn all about plagiarism and academic integrity. The first one happened on Friday, October 15th, but no need to worry, another workshop is set on Wednesday, December 1st from 6 to 7 p.m. in the Writing Center. That's in Crestview 208. Reservations are not required, but seating is limited to the number of computers that are available. Contact Maria or Leanne Meyer for details. And talented artisans from around the world are headed to campus in early November. IUS will be hosting Wares of the World, an international bazaar, on November 1st and 2nd in the Hoosier Room. Handcrafted gifts and home decor will be available for purchase at the festival, and the several displays will show various cultures. Stay with the Horizon Newscast for full coverage of this event. You are now caught up on the latest campus and area news. I'm Kevin Schmidt. Back to you, Josh. Do you have your own budget strategy? Do you know about identity theft? Brittany Bullard and Jordan Smith checked out the Ultimate Money Skills Challenge to see what IUS really knows about money. In the Hoosier Room, students learn the importance of managing your money, your credit, and your investments. Approximately 125 students gathered in the Hoosier Room to have lunch and learn about credit scores, the stock market, and identity theft. The entertaining speech was given by Frank Simmons, a speaker from Monster.com's Making It Count program. I, I think the, the most important thing is, is how to manage it. Uh, you know, having the credit cards and knowing how to manage that credit card without going over your limits, uh, making your payments on time. So probably the most important thing you'll get out of here today is how to take control of the money that's coming in. So we need to know, is it the correct rate? Is it a teaser rate? Do they bring us in at zero a few months later? It's higher than that. If we miss a payment or we're late with a payment, can it go up? If it can go up, how much can it go up? Those are the kinds of things we're looking at. Students were also given the chance to win one of eight $250 scholarships in a drawing. Um, well, I think it's something that everybody should at least try to listen to because there's a lot of information that I personally didn't know about, and I'm sure that not everybody knows all of this information. So, Students were entertained by the presentation, and they learned a lot about money management. I learned how to... Um, better look at credit cards and, and know what to look for in a credit card and loans and learn how to spend money. Representatives from financial aid were impressed with the turnout at the event. An awesome turnout. We had about 125 students here and everyone enjoyed a great lunch so the uh, dining services provided an awesome lunch for us and student program council and we're so grateful to our speaker and we're just thrilled. We can't wait to do it again next year. This has been Brittany Bullard and Jordan Smith with the Horizon Newscast. Recently, IU received a federal grant of nearly $650,000 to better their emergency management planning efforts on all their campuses. Ashley Agnew and Brooke Lehman investigated the story to see where all the money is going. 
The emergency management grant for more than $640,000 was given to six IU campuses to share, and IU Southeast was one of them. To four phases of emergency management, which are prevention, mitigation, preparedness, response, and recovery. So it's going to help in all the, all four of those areas. Uh, any, any kind of emergency, uh, we have to evacuate or would we have to uh, stay in place. Uh, it brings in uh, other uh, police departments, other fire departments. So I use really making a big push to be prepared for any type of emergency. I feel quite safe here at IU Southeast. Uh, campus is pretty spread out, um, evenly spaced. I believe we have a good police presence here. I think it's a great thing. I mean, I think it's it's really going to help us uh, improve. To see the full press release about the grant, visit newsinfo.iu.edu. I'm Ashley Agnew for the Horizon Newscast. That's all for the Horizon Newscast this week. Check us out online for all of your campus news anytime, 24-7. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.